this hand. Good morning, God's people. A very warm and special welcome to you to our service as we gather a community of faith, a community of broken and frail people. This morning, our reflections is on God's consensus and tolerance. And so as we listen to God's word this morning, we try and see uh, and understand God's tolerance and consensus uh, to who we are and the things we do. We remind ourselves this morning that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. met ibius. In wekmeti. In kosi inani. And so we listen to the hymn, To God be the glory, great things God hath done. God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth, 
Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Here, wie es genade. In Corsi Siao Kele. In Corsi Siao Kele. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor as we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence I confess that I have sinned against you through my own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what I have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we pray together. O Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinity you, you are, are the unity, unity of love. love. Keep in love those who are born to each other and sustain the love of those who choose one another, that all will flourish in the security you intend. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have a reading from the book of Job, chapter 1, reading, from, reading verse 1, and chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 10. There was once a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. 
Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is psalm number 26. I'll read up to the colon, and if you'll please finish the verse for me. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in the Lord, and not failed. Put me to the test, O Lord, and prove me. For your steadfast love has been ever before my eyes. I have not sat with deceivers. I hate the assembly of the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, O Lord. And lift up the voice of thanksgiving. Lord, I love the house of your habitation. Do not sweep me away with sinners, in whose hand is abomination. As for me, I walk in my integrity. My foot stands on an even path. I will bless the Lord in the great congregation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Listen to the good news proclaimed in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, and reading from the second verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces a husband and marries another, she commits adultery. 
People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray, speak in this place, in the calming of our minds and in the longing of our hearts, by the words of my lips and in the thoughts that we form. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. Please be seated. We generally tend to give more attention to those who excel in life, don't we? Whether it is by being law-abiding citizens, whether it is the righteous or the achievers. And even in our preaching and reflection on scripture, it is always on those who can achieve that we tend to put our attention. So we tend to affirm and approve the people who in many ways pleases us. We will praise the achiever, we will fuss over the successful learners, we will reward those who don't cause us any embarrassment. So we ensure that others know how proud we are of their successes and achievements. While, on the other hand, we very seldom speak about those who do not do that well. We never run out in the street and say, oh, my child failed, my child failed, do we? So today I would like to reflect on the so-called non-achievers, the sinners, the deviant, the, the disobedient, and those who are socially maligned in our society. The readings this morning speaks about brokenness and being unsuccessful. And it tells us of God's allowances, God's consensus, and God's tolerance. That God does not only engage with those who please God, or those who are good at keeping God's law, or fulfilling God's purposes, but also with those who disapprove of God, or have failed in adhering to God's rules. So let us think about how God dealt, deals with those who have hardened hearts and what, how God engaged with Satan in the book of John. Now St. Mark records an incident where Jesus was again confronted by the Pharisees about a moral issue. And their question had to do with the lawfulness of divorce. So Jesus explains that Moses conceded to the people's demands because of their hardness of heart. Sin and our inability to do the will of God is because we have hardened our hearts. Human beings constantly contradict God's original purposes because they have hardened their hearts. And it is as if Jesus on this occasion acknowledges human weaknesses and their failures and their frailties. So when he responded to the question, Jesus reminds them and reminds us in a way that when God completed creation, God declared it was good. And yet in the very next chapter, of the book of Genesis, 
it tells us of the fall of human beings. That we fell quicker than God had taken to create the world. So the world is a community of imperfect people and sinners. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus states, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So as a result of Jesus' coming for the sinner, we will fall, but through God's grace we get up only to fall again. The wise king of Israel, Solomon, wrote in Proverbs chapter 4, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do, flow from it. So Jesus does not necessarily pass judgment on the lawbreaker or condemn them to hell, but emphasizes the risk and consequences of their sin. By committing one sin, Jesus says, will lead to the breaking of other laws. We fail In fulfilling God's purposes, says the Bible, because of the hardness of our hearts. And this is not just a matter of divorce, but it spans the whole spectrum of human experience. In 1 Samuel Samuel chapter 6 and verse 6, we read that the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts by refusing to let the Jews go. In Hebrews chapter 8, St. Paul appeals to the Hebrews not to harden their hearts as Israel did in their rebellion during the Exodus. And St. Mark tells us that the disciples lacked understanding what God, what Jesus was doing because their hearts were hardened. So the hardness of our hearts is evident when we refuse to listen to God and to each other. When we refuse to say, I am sorry, and apologize for the things we do wrong. When we fail to confess our sins to God and to repent of that sin. It is the hardness of our hearts that causes us to be filled with pride and arrogance, with a false sense of superiority, and to live our false self when we think we are all right, and when we pretend and do the things that we think others would like to see in us. The book of Job includes a very interesting detail in the gathering of the heavenly beings. In the Hebrew, heavenly beings is translated from the Hebrew B'nai Ha Elohim, translated sons of God. So Satan is found in the presence of the sons of God. Now in the Hebrew Bible, Ha Satan appears to be a member of the sons of God subordinate to Yahweh, who persecutes the nation of Judah in the heavenly courts and tests the loyalty of Yahweh's followers. In the Synoptic Gospels, Satan tempts Jesus in the desert and is identified as the cause of illness and temptation. In the book of Revelations, Satan appears as a great red dragon who is defeated by Michael, the archangel, and cast down from heaven. Now the point of this is that God does not banish Satan from the courts or the gathering of the heavenly beings. And God affords Satan an audience. And even though Satan challenges God and questions God's judgment concerning Job, God 
allows Satan. It is not that God condones the sin, but God does not condemn the sinner. And I think that's really important for us to remember. Both for ourselves and for others who we may think of or judge as sinners. And so there's two lessons I, I take from this passage of John. Firstly, it tells us of the confidence that God has in John. And we can read that whole story in the book in the Old Testament. But we must believe that God has a similar confidence in you and I. That we will remain loyal and that our faith will carry us through the valleys and the hills of life. And that once we get the equation right of who God is, that God is, God was, and God will be, then we will be able to declare like St. Paul did to the Romans when he wrote, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, God will never give up on us. And we have no need to give up on God. Secondly, the story in Job tells us of God's tolerance towards Satan and God's tolerance towards us who behave like Satan at times. That in those instances, when we move away from God, then God remains what Richard Raw calls the great allower. That God allows us the scope to go, to explore, and that when we're tired in our search of finding nothing, then God welcomes us back with open arms. Just like the parable of the prodigal son teaches. It is wrong to contravene the will of God as God had ordained for each one of us. But St. Paul discourages us from putting God to the test or abusing God's generous mercy. But we remember that God, the Savior, gave all that he was so that we may become all that God wants us to be. Not in our own strength, our own ability, or our own wiseness, but through God's generous and gracious, gracious mercy. So God's people today, we called upon to reflect on our lives and our relationships. Our relationship with God and our relationship that finds our love for God through our expression to each other. That we can't just have a this relationship with God. But that it is this relationship we have with God that needs to flow out among us. We remember that we are fallen creatures and that we live among a community of fallen creatures. That we all have sinned. But our state of fallenness does not necessarily mean that there is no hope for us. That through the triune God, whose very nature is love and mercy and grace, we hold on to the hope that even though we are broken and fragile and sinful, we can be redeemed because of the blood or the life that Jesus gave for each one of us. God 
is tolerant. God is loving. God is merciful. And God is gracious. May we know that equation as we continue in our struggles to serve our living God. Amen. Let us pray. As we offer our prayers to God for our country and church, let us light the prayer candles for South Africa and COVID. Gracious Lord, we continue to pray for our country, that our land may be one of righteousness, justice and peace. Will we pray for safety and security in our land, for an end to greed, corruption and violence. We pray that all leaders and heads of state may take wise advice and act responsibly for the well-being of all. As we pray for our country, let us say the prayer for South Africa together. God bless South Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Lord of heaven, let your will be done. We pray for the church, that the body of Christ may be alive to your beckoning, quick to obey your will, and always ready to act in your loving service for the good of the world. Father, we pray for your servant, Nkosinati, our bishop, together with Tabo, our metropolitan, and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments, that by their life and teaching, your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you. Lord of heaven, let your will be done. Father, we thank you for our families and those with whom we have close relationships with. We especially pray for all marriages, for those seeking marriage partners and those whose marriages are under strain. We pray that in our relationships you may grant your heavenly grace and that there may always be mutual love and respect shown for one another. We commit to you ourselves and especially commit to you these parish families today for blessing. Alan and Thora Gollidge, Maliga Ganden, Tony and Trish Hrunink, and Betty Hall. Lord of heaven, let, let your will be done. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who are suffering through illness, accident or deliberate cruelty, for refugees and all who are abused, that through the caring of human hands we may come to experience your caring and healing hands upon us. We also commit to you those who are mentioned in the pew leaflet, including those who are frail and bereaved, and we pray your comfort and peace upon us. Lord of heaven, let your will be done. As we pray for God's healing mercies, let us pray now for God's help to bring an end to the devastation on humanity by the COVID pandemic. Let us say the COVID prayer together. 
Gracious and compassionate God, heal our world from the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Direct the minds of the medical fraternity and all who are tirelessly working for a cure. Strengthen those that selflessly provide care and assistance to the destitute and ill. Give peace to the anxious and worried, vision to those who have lost faith, assurance of your love and power to those who fear the future. We pray this in the name of Jesus our Lord, the risen Christ. Amen. Father, we bring before you all who have died violently or suddenly, or with no one to miss them. May those who have died in faith be judged with mercy and welcomed into eternal life. We pour out our thanks and praise for the gift of life and the gift of one another. May we receive each other with renewed reverence. Heavenly Father, your Son, has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will answer us. Answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come to the end of our live broadcast and we thank our viewers at home for joining us this morning. May God bless you today and the rest of the week as we share the good news of God's love with others. Amen. Please stand. Listen to the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you.